Welcome to What Are You Playing with your host, Derek. We're back for episode seven. It's a special episode, and that is uh, we are going to do, and we talked about it last week on the show, we're going to do a spoiler cast. So this is my first one with the with the new podcast, and we're going to do it for Sinuous Saga. I hate this name, by the way. <laughs> Hellblade 2. Yeah, it's backwards. Um, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yes. I agree. So I have brought on Jesse White. You're back. Yep. Yeah, I'm basically a regular at this point. Yeah, I got to I got to get rid of them. <laughs> and we have a new guest. Uh, I haven't talked to you in a while, Rudy, but uh, yes. welcome, Rudy. How are you thank doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm not a regular, but me and Derek go way back. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Still counts for something. <laughs> I think it's it's got to be like at least a decade. And I probably oh met you God, in yeah. Beyond Group or something like that. That's, but... that's exactly what it was. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, if you like the show, you are always going to be welcome to come on. I know you play a lot of games, and uh, awesome. Yeah. In case you, well, you actually probably don't know, but I'll explain what my show is to you, and then any new listeners. But essentially, uh, it's themed after what are you? It, what are you playing? It's themed after the um, merchant from Resident Evil Four. What are you buying? Uh, I, I like didn't that. do. I didn't do the voice acting, but it's supposed to be <laughs> what are you playing? And I just bring on new guests every week. And sure. we just talk about whatever they're playing. Now, granted, most of the time I try to get people who are playing new releases because I'm always buying new releases. But even if it's just like you come on the show and you're playing a game from 20 years ago, I don't care. We'll talk about it. We'll deep dive uh, your thoughts, your feelings. So that's essentially what I do on this show. And we record okay. every couple weeks. And it's a real chill show. So Sounds with good. that being said... Let's dive in. All right, so all three of us have beaten Hellblade 2. That's all I'm going to call it from now on. I'm not talking. <laughs> I'm not saying her name no more. It's a new um, saga, man. <laughs> so I'm going to actually start with Rudy because we did have Jesse on the show last week, and we did talk about this game, but we only sure. talked about it like kind of like high level. <laughs> we didn't want to do spoilers or anything because we knew we were going to do this podcast or this show. So what right. I wanted to hear from you is, what first of all did you like the first hellblade game yeah so i actually did not love the first one and when i started seeing reviews and stuff i started thinking like man am i is this going to be the same thing just like the same game again but more the same basically is what i thought but it at least to me it did not feel that way okay. yes of course it's the same general game but i did not feel i had the same experience at all Okay, and we'll discuss that a little bit deeper because I'm very curious sure. about that. But but overall, you would say, if you had to score, what would you give the first game from a scale of 1 to 10? Oh, man, I feel I feel bad with this because I'm so conflicted because I, I I respect Jesse's opinion and when he talks about it, I'm no, like, you don't, know what? Maybe I missed this. Don't respect Jesse's opinion. <laughs> don't respect it. I don't know. I'd probably right now, honestly... With my first playthrough, I'd probably get like a six. Like I didn't, I really didn't enjoy it that much. The first one, it's actually so higher he, than I was expecting you to say. I think he falls yeah. in line with how I felt. We talked about it on last <laughs> week's show, so I'm not going to reiterate it just because I don't want to bore the anybody who does repeat listen to my show. But essentially, I went into it with high hopes, and when I yeah. finished it, I was like, "This is like a six or a seven. I, that's why sure. I said, "Don't listen to Jesse. Jesse's." I don't I don't take him serious. I bring him on my show just so I can bash him. That's it. Um, yeah, so, I sorry. Yeah, my, my so I was just gonna say, so I'm probably more in line with you uh sure. that I didn't go into the second one with that much hype. Would you agree that you were yeah, I'll play it, it's on Game Pass or wherever you played it, <laughs> right. but your hype level was probably a little bit lower? Yeah, I thought all right, this is a short game. Let me give it a try, you know, on the off chance that I end up liking it. But I wasn't, like, super excited, you know? I was like, let me just check it out. It was kind of like that. Okay. Just out of curiosity, yeah. for the first game, do you think you went into that game with the appropriate expectations of what that game was? Um, The only thing I think I'd say <clears throat> was, wasn't was accurate uh, was, if I remember correctly, it was um, a PlayStation exclusive at first, right? Am I right and about PC, that? I think. I think it yeah, was on PC. Yeah, PlayStation and PC. Okay. Yeah. I think that may have affected my thought of it a bit in the sense that, you know, usually PlayStation exclusives, I usually are, you know, put them pretty high. Like, wow, these are really great games. So I think maybe, at least partially, I thought 
it would be a better game than I ended up thinking it was. I think that's the only bit, not in terms of what you do in the game or, or what's the moment to moment. That part I knew what I was getting into, you know, but I'd say that maybe that, maybe that played a bit of a part, you know? Okay. I was so, curious because that was something we had we had talked about last time. Was sure, Derek? You yeah, had my, mentioned... my 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 uh, <laughs> perspective on what I thought the game was going to be was off. Gotcha. I definitely was. I because uh, what I was telling Jesse and the the listeners is, um, I'm a big Ninja Theory fan. Well, I was. Sure. I'm an ex sure. big Ninja Theory <laughs> fan. And um, so when Hellblade was being talked about, previewed. <laughs> All the journals they released, like describing it, I was like, this game's going to be so amazing. These guys are so great. It wasn't even about PlayStation platform because I was more of an right. Xbox back then. Right. It was about Ninja Theory. And sure. when the game came out, I was completely let down. Now, as I said, and we'll transition right now, I think this is a perfect time to do it, into right. Hellblade 2. Um, after playing Hellblade 2 and having a conversation with Jesse, I said, hey, I think I need to go back to the first one because yes, I think too. my expectations were off and I really enjoyed the second one. I landed at an eight on the second one, whereas if you would have asked me after I beat the first one, especially how angry I got at some of the puzzles and some of the combat, <laughs> oh my God. I probably would have scored it a six <laughs> or a seven. Sure, um, sure. So I definitely landed at a higher score with Hellblade 2. So that being said, before we actually dive into details of like the characters, the story, the ending, right. all of that, which I want to get to, I want your impressions of the second one now sure. that we know how you felt about the first one. If you want to score it, you can. But right. what, what were your overall thoughts of the game from beginning to end? Okay, yeah, actually, I think this is going to do it this way before we get into it, because <clears throat> I do want to say with the first one and then lead it to the second one, when I think back on my experience with the first one, no doubt that I thought the story was was great, <clears throat> but I think my frustration was, like, I didn't really like the puzzles too much, and strangely enough, I didn't like the combat in the first one as much as I liked the second one, even though the second one has been much more simplified. I think those things... <clears throat> sort of without me even trying to made me maybe I drift off a little bit while some important story beats happen. So I knew what happened, but I just wasn't as into it, you know? And so to me, that was probably the strongest part of the first one, the story. And, and because mm -hmm. I didn't really relate to that too much, the other things probably seemed even worse to me, you know? Um, so then when I went to the second one, <clears throat> immediately I noticed that, well, there's obvious things, right? <clears throat> it's beautiful looking. It looks really, yeah. it looks way better. I, that's did you play, no, did you play no it on PC that. or Xbox? I played it on PC and I was like, holy crap, this is like, yeah. I already saw how good it looked on Xbox. So on my computer, I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. Maybe so, yeah, the no best could, could make looking game that's been yeah, made yet, very well, possibly. Very well could be. Uh, um, I, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be up there. I mean, it's like watching, like you're playing an actual movie. And Jesse and I talked about this, like <clears throat> the cutscenes transitioning yeah. into gameplay <laughs> never transition. <laughs> it's literally it's the same game. thing. <laughs> yeah. It's all in yeah. game. So it's just like, dude, nothing transitions. <laughs> this game literally looks the exact same no matter what you're doing. It's actually I, crazy. I totally agree. It's it's amazing. And actually, because I played Hellblade 1 <clears throat> so long ago, I didn't realize how much worse it looked. Not that it looked bad, but in comparison, it's it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Like this is I went back it's to it's incredible what money can do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Money and money some, and uh, time. Some backing and some time. Yeah. Money um, and time. <laughs> they got what seven years better financing and just sure. obviously the architecture of everything's better now. So yeah. No, they, they clearly put a lot of work into it. So that being said, I played the first time for I only had like a half hour to play the <clears throat> the first time. I was just really busy. I was like, okay, it looks good. The next time I went back, <clears throat> I immediately noticed that the puzzles were not pissing me off. They okay. were few and far between. And in my opinion, they weren't frustrating to me. They felt very right. fair. Occasionally, I get one where I couldn't figure it out, but I wasn't mad at it. It was fine. I was. And I was they're very. Out. They're not all the same. They vary. <clears throat> That's the other thing. I love that this game did like the rune puzzles where you line them up, but they also did like the bubble one. I thought that was cool. I actually really liked mm -hmm. those puzzles. You know, they were interesting to me. Um, so that immediately was already a plus for me. Uh, then the combat. Now, it had been so many years since I played the original, so I think I forgot a bit. But the combat, to me, in this one, 
it felt so awesome with the set pieces, but you're still interacting a bit. And, and I, I don't want to say it was hard, but you had to, it wasn't like you're sitting there watching it. You had to, you know, time it right and, and mm-hmm. do like the, the parries or, or the, um, the special ability there. And yeah. I just felt like they pulled it off so, so well. It felt so awesome. It reminded me of, um, you know, in God of War, Ragnarok, when you had a few moments where like Atreus and Kratos, they're fighting, they're going, remember that part where they're like together mm-hmm. and they're like going back and forth and the camera spinning? The, uh, up close, yeah. Yeah. I thought Hellblade 2 did that amazingly. Like, I loved it. I loved when, whenever you'd have a battle and it'd be panning around Senua and the other dude jumps in. Where I just thought they nailed that yeah. and it got me like so pumped. You know, I didn't really have moments like that in the first one, you know? So I thought that was excellent. But then they also bounced it out with the slower parts, like learning about the giant's history and stuff. I was like, this is fascinating. Like, I'm really liking this, you know? So I might be in the minority that. I actually enjoyed the story more in the second one. I know that's not the popular opinion, and maybe I'll change if I go back and play it. Yeah. But man, just the story, the combat, even though some people said it was too limited, to me it was just right for this kind of game. Um, and yeah, I just I just loved it, man. I thought it was, I thought think, it was fantastic. I think Jesse uh, brought up, I'm pretty sure it was you, yeah. last show, you made a comment that I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense, dude. And that is the number one thing I think people complained about when they were complaining about this game, besides right. the length. Everybody complains about length nowadays. Of course, yeah, of course. Um, but, like, was the combat. Well, it's too simple, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was, like, I was kind of in that same boat. I was like, yeah, I, I liked it. Don't get me wrong. It kind of reminded sure. me of, I'm, I'm forgetting the name now, and I wish I could I, look it up, but... Um, the Xbox game that came out on Xbox One at launch, the Rise, Rome, of, Rome. Rise, Rise, Rise yep. of Rome, yep. kind of had that feel to it, um, sure, sure. where it's like this really beautiful game that's very like cinematic. And yep. Jesse mentioned, he's like, yeah, this game, if you think about it, is kind of like you're playing a movie. So even the combat is not gamey because sure. it's cinematic. And I was like... You're right, dude. It is yeah, very cinematic. Like they, if they would have like pulled the camera back and then added combos and button prompts and all that stuff, that would have been gamey, which is totally fine if they would have done that. Nobody would have complained. Sure. But if you think about it, they are trying to essentially make an emotional movie that's yeah. interactive and semi fun to play. And I personally believe in the second one. I'm not saying it was bad in the first one. There was just sure bosses i hated in the first one that made the combat annoying to me sure, but in this sure. one i never had any trouble i got in a rhythm i i knew what they wanted me to do i knew how to do it and i enjoyed the like you were saying the especially the last oh man that was so good big fights where you're leading up to the end where you're just fighting with your companions and the camera's flipping. It felt like oh, cool. a Marvel action scene, cool. scene yeah. where they it would show a guy coming in, throwing somebody, and then backing you up and getting your back. And all this stuff and all the camera movements was all professionally done. I was like, dude, this is legit. This is yeah. this is a movie or an interactive movie. So when he brought that point up, I was like, yeah. I can buy that, like, because it does fit. It doesn't feel like it's just an excuse for, like, well, the combat's not good, so I'm just going to say it's that. It fits with the theme of the game. This is what these two games have been. They're more about the emotional story that they're trying to tell. They want you to connect with all the characters, and the combat, in a way, takes the back seat. But if you compare it to, like, uh, anything that Telltale does, and you might be like, right. "Dirk, this is nothing like Telltale." <laughs> Again, the goal of those two ga- those two franchises, or anything Telltale makes, is to tell a story. That's what their that's their goal. The sure. difference is, is Telltale everything they do that's gameplay is boring and sucky. This yeah, is sure. actually fun. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that they're the same type of game or anything like that. It's just the goal is the same, and that's. We want to tell a story. Um, and a lot of times, especially in Telltale games, they want to tell an emotional story too. And that's what this game did. So I thought they nailed it when I thought of it in that way, that the combat was more for the cinematic feel rather than, hey, it's just not a fun game to play or something like that. I um, I, yeah, I go think, ahead, Jesse. I think what they really did to make that that more cinematic feel 
is that I feel like the first game is much more hack and slashy, where you dodge, you take a couple swings, something comes from behind, you dodge, you take a couple swings. It's 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 not as in depth as this game is. It's not as personal. Like you're sure. you're much more you're closer in. You're only for the most part doing one on one fights. Yeah. It is. Game. It's one on one. Even when they switch it, it's one on yeah. one. Yeah, you kill something, and then something else might immediately come in. Yes. So they're able to make a lot of those sweeping camera movements and things like that because the the combat is a lot more focused. Sure. Yep. I agree with that. And I thought it, I thought it was really, really done well. And funny thing is, is Rudy, I hadn't chatted with you for the listeners. I hadn't chatted with you about this game at all. Uh, yeah. Only thing I knew is through Jesse that you were playing it and that you were going to beat it. And then once you beat it, you were willing to join the show. That's all yep. I knew. So as you're sharing your opinion, this is all <laughs> new to me. And I'm going, dude, <laughs> his experience with the first game is almost identical to mine. And right. his experience with the second game was so far how everything you've uh, spoke on is yeah. almost identical. And, and here's what I mean by that. Like, I agree with the combat. And then also I agree with the puzzles. Like, yeah. I... In the first one, not a big fan of the puzzles. Didn't like how sure. they repeated themselves. And it wasn't just the repeating. I'm not one of those people that are like, you have to do something new every five seconds to keep me entertained. Sure, I'm okay sure. with repeating stuff if it's cool. Right. That stuff was not cool. And in this game... They kind of found it, their group, you know? They got better they at had, it. They had variation, and I never felt like anything overstayed its welcome and like you there was a couple of puzzles where i was like i can't find i think i said it on the show last time jesse where it was like one part where i was i was teetering on pitching a fit like doing my little man child (laughs) like i can't i can't find this last thing this is annoying me and right when i was about ready to pitch a fit, i was like there it is i get to move forward no longer are you going to pitch a fit. So my experience with the puzzles was also, and the, uh, anybody who's listened to me, and I've been doing podcasts for like eight, nine years, anybody who's ever listened to me knows puzzles are probably one of the least favorite things I enjoy in video games. I am all about action, kicking butt. I, I, I get the reason puzzles exist. I'm not saying I don't want them in games. It's just you're never going to, A, you're never going to catch me playing a game that's strictly puzzles. And B, so Portal, sorry I didn't beat you, even though I, <laughs> I got pretty close. Actually, I beat the first Portal. It was Portal 2 I didn't get all the way through. Um, but I'm not a big puzzle dude, and so you won't catch me playing that. And rarely in a game that has both action puzzle am I going to be like, well, this puzzle stuck out. It was so much fun. I'm playing it for the action. The puzzle is just changing up the pacing. Sure. Um, so... Speaking of pacing, see how I transition? Matt, you're getting good. You're good at that. This is so professional, besides <laughs> the fact that I'm not wearing a shirt. Um, <laughs> what did you guys think of the pacing? Pacing in this game? Did you see any issues, or did you feel like it paced itself quite well? And how it told the story? When it would put in puzzles? When it would put in combat? How how was your overall pa- uh, thoughts on the pacing? We'll start with Jesse. What did you think? I thought the pacing was good. Uh, I actually admittedly think the pacing in the first game was better. Okay. Um, I felt like in Hellblade 2, the way they transitioned between, you know, the walking sim parts and then Mm -hmm. puzzles and action could sometimes be a little drawn out, which is weird to say in a game that's only like six hours long. But some of those parts could feel long like the whole underground part where you're going to find the hidden people yeah it's long yeah feels long long where hellblade one i feel like never had any down parts like that i mean you could get through that game pretty quick and it's just part after part after part true I think, uh, and Rudy, I, I want you to share next on the pacing, sure. but I think to to talk about the underground part, I think what helped me to not make a big deal in my mind about the underground part is I saw, I think somebody posted about it. It may have been maybe in one of our chats, Jesse, you mentioned, and I read it. And you're, you're like, oh, I'm not a big fan of this underground part, blah, blah, blah. It goes a little long or it has puzzles. <laughs> somebody said it had a lot of puzzles. 
which is a turnoff. And that so it was before I got to that part. And then when I went through that part, I was like, that's fine. It was fine. So my expectations were extremely low for that part. So when I went through it, I was like, no, I don't I don't feel that way. I don't feel like it overstayed. Um, I actually the only area I really had a problem with was right after you get out from the underground and you're in that really cool, vibrant, almost like mazy section oh, where you yeah. come out of the caves. Um, yeah, you're in like was... forest and everybody has like their fears. They live out there. Yeah, fears yeah. Part. Yeah. So that that was the only part where I was like, okay, come on. Um, but overall, I thought it was paced really well with they mixed in combat nicely where it wasn't overdone but it wasn't absent too long we already talked about the puzzles not only did i not have a problem with 90 percent of the puzzles but i also didn't feel like they overstayed their welcome or were too many of them where i was like dude come on this is dragging because that's when i'll i'll get annoyed with puzzles and then obviously the way they play out the story and we'll talk about this probably with our next topic on this game i did feel like the pacing of the story especially towards the end was off they still told a good story in fact sure. the reason i would rate the the story really good and we'll again we'll talk about it is the ending it had a little nice for me a little twist maybe people figured everything out before me but i didn't um, I so i like the little twist and I'm a big twist guy, so if you drop something, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. Didn't think of that. It always ups how I feel about the story. But as a whole, as far as pacing, I felt like the story was, especially with some of the companions, a little rushed. Especially the third, I think the third major companion that's like on your squad for like oh, two yeah. seconds. <laughs> and then it's like, hey, dude, she's really cool. Why does the <laughs> game got to end? I literally just met her. Yeah. Um, so that's my only gripe when it comes to the pacing. Rudy, how about you? What what were your thoughts on the pacing of the game overall? Yeah, by the way, now that you mentioned about the, the last girl, I'm not even going to try to say her name. I can't remember. Um, but <laughs> They're all I terrible think, names. <laughs> far, I, I'm really trying to remember. I love the game so much, but I'm trying to remember the names. Like Fargrimer and what was the other guy? I, I actually have her pulled up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll What's down to her and I'll tell you. The first one is like Thor's Grimir or something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I actually didn't really have a problem with the pacing. But now you have to take... <clears throat> into account that for whatever reason i just had an Astridur. extremely busy week oh something like that yeah it's it has like, like it has that little like symbol <clears throat> above one of the letters that changes the way they say it i guess i don't know but yeah i had a really busy week that week so the way that i played hellway 2 was like i played for 45 minutes the first night then an hour and a half the next you know i i do like little chunks and so <clears throat> it was probably like five or six sessions and I guess the way I played it, it was fine. Like, I had no problem with it. Now, would yeah. that have been different maybe if I took, you know, I'm sure, Jesse, I'm sure right away you probably played a good chunk of it. So, yeah, it might be different. But for me personally, I I had no problem with it. I, I love the way everything was going. Every time I sat down, something new happening, a new a new um, uh, uh, companion coming with you or something, some new giant you're learning about, whatever it was. I just didn't expect the story to even go in that in that direction at all. I thought it was going to be another, I'm going to go back and get revenge. Like I thought that was all it was going to be, you know? So <clears throat> that was a pleasant surprise. And I will say when I, when I finished the game, the first thing on my mind was, <clears throat> I can't wait to tell Jesse how much I love this game. Cause I know he's <laughs> expecting me to come back <laughs> and say something so bad. Cause I remember I was like, I had seen reviews and <clears throat> we were kind of talking. I was like, oh, I've seen some good reviews, but man, some of them are saying X, Y, and Z is not good. And this is not good, and that is not good, and I'm like, oh man, I'm not gonna like this game, but no, it's totally wrong. So, so yeah. No, that's how it. that's yeah. how I felt. I was actually yeah, like, Jesse I was, was definitely Jeffy was definitely expecting me to bash it, and I <laughs> yeah, was already I in was. the chat. I was already in the chat. Can't wait to tell you, Hell Trash Two is <laughs> the worst game ever. You have bad I, taste. Wait, Derek, didn't we have like? At one point, I want to say we were on the podcast together, and that was the joke. We kept calling it a hell trash, and Jesse oh, yeah. was there too. I feel like I remember this. Yeah. You know, we mm -hmm. kept ragging on on the hell game. Trash. So I'm sure 
It's been even though it took it was seven years later. I'm sure it's been a nice. Uh, Jesse still nice has a hit list for everybody that called it hell trash. <laughs> yeah, he's sure. he's gonna pick us all I'm off sure. one by one when we least slowly but it. surely. Yeah. yeah, he's like I'm just getting everybody to think that we're friends, and then I'm oh, gonna right. finish them. I can't I can't deny. No one can call me a uh, a hater or something for because I was not expected to like it, and I completely changed my mind. So yeah, nice. and I think overall, I think. Uh, for the most part, all three of us are pretty positive gamers. And what I mean by saying yeah, that is, I don't think we look to hate on games. I definitely don't. I buy, no. <laughs> what's up, buddy? I buy way too uh, many games. <laughs> I buy <laughs> so <laughs> many games that I, I think I like too much is my biggest problem. Um, so true. if I don't like something, it takes a lot to get me to that place. Um, and a lot of times... Again, I've said it before, and I, I'll say it with the first Hellblade. Probably was uh, an expectation thing. And if I went back, I would probably come back on my own podcast and be like, nope, game's better than what I, I gave it credit for. All right, yeah. so let's let's uh, willing... dive in. Go ahead. Sorry, Derek. Something. I was just going to say I'm willing to concede on that point, too. I haven't replayed it. I was actually going to replay it. And then I was actually talking to Jesse. It was like May 20th. I'm like, I think I'm going to replay. He's like, it comes out tomorrow. I'm like, oh, shoot. <clears throat> Never mind that. Um, but I have a feeling if I was to go back and replay it, I'd probably still have some issues with it. But I think I'd probably like it more. Uh, I think we'd like time. it more. We would yeah, know what it is. I think I think our expectations would be different. Sure. All right. So let's get to what I would consider the closing part of the, the show, but potentially could be the longest part, depending on how deep we dive into this. This is where I think we're actually going to dive into real, real spoilers. So, I mean, it's literally called a spoiler cast for this game. So (laughs) if you've been listening to the show and you're shocked by the fact that we're going to talk about everything, that includes the ending. um, Let's dive into the story. Um, So the first one, the, the story was a journey of... And and Jesse, you can fill in the gaps because I haven't played this in seven years, and I think <laughs> I watched a recap before I played the I second <laughs> one. But I think it was it's essentially like she's being uh, haunted, and it's by her dead husband, right? Like he was executed. She's trying to like, like she's trying yes. to like let let go of him, right? Yeah, like her 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 husband or boyfriend or whatever it was was executed by her father. Right. Yes. Which, so she's being haunted by that, and so she's trying to. Yeah, she's she took his head and is bringing it to Helheim to try to save his soul. Essentially, gotcha. She was trying to bring her husband boyfriend back, right? That was her not goal? necessarily bring him back, but at least save his soul. Okay, so yeah, he and... wasn't in limbo. Uh, no, no, I don't okay. think so. And what what I gathered from it was that you know she. I, she obviously has these this condition, you know. She's like schizophrenic or whatever else, and then she has like like the shadow voice, right, that haunts her. And I yeah. feel like by the time the game was over, she kind of realized that this is not what I should be doing, really, right? Like I can still live my life. And, yep. And basically, right yeah. Basically, when she gets to the end and reaches Hella, that's I mean, it's not actually a god that's in front of her. It's her right. own psyche that she's fighting. Yes. At, the, at the end, there's this whole sequence where Hela picks up Dillian's head and drops it off a cliff. And then it pans back up to Hela, but it's not Hela. It's actually Senua, meaning that she had released her demons, basically, and came to terms with what has happened to Dillian and is ready to move on. And the the deep, uh, I'll call it a demonic voice that speaks to her in her head. That's her father, right? Like yes, it's it, her, but it's but it's her father. Yes, basically it is. haunting her. One hundred percent. Okay. Okay. All right. So now that we kind of set it up with the first one, so it's definitely a more personal story. In the first now one. now the second one, we kind of like intro the game where she's on a ship that she's basically purposely gone into slavery because she's trying to go to the source of the the slavers who were taking her people or murdering her people and they're essentially taking her her people 
to offer them to a god, correct? And so she's going, she let them capture her, and she's going over there in hopes to, like, escape it's, and then kill them or whatever. It's not, it's not to, to the god, it's actually to the giants. To the giants, right? So it's trying yeah. to sacrifice them so they stay a lot, stay safe right. or whatever. Okay, so that's the journey that we pick up on. That's what she's doing. So she, and it's actually a pretty cool scene. So she shipwrecks, and it's, like, all over the place. Like, everything's going crazy. And then she runs into the main like slaver, and that's the Thorg For, Thorgster, 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 Thorgster or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I like so Thorgster she, better. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna call him Thorgster. Good old Thorgster. <laughs> call him Thor. 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 There we go. <laughs> so she she runs into Thor. He's like the dude that's like you know running his mouth on the ship and everything like that. He's obviously the main uh, main guy, which we find out he's the son. Of the lord of that like island like, or wherever they were. Villain. Yes. Yeah. Um. So, uh, first of all, I want to say I really liked his character. Me too. Um. I also liked like his arc. Um. Probably the best arc in the game as far as like he's a villain. Like he's the first villain you run into, and then you fight him. It was actually a good fight, but at the time I was this is when I was learning how to fight. And I was like, I have no idea what this game's wanting me to do. Going back to what we were talking about with combat being more movie and cinematic, there's no button prompts. So for me, I was playing. I'm like, why does this guy do, keep hitting me even though I'm dodging? Like, what? What? He turns red, and I can't. I can't block it. I can't dodge. What? What am I supposed to do? And then I, you know, I started figuring out things slowly. But, um, but it's a nice uh, little boss fight that you take him down, and then he becomes kind of your slave. And you drag him around. Um, where did where did she take him to his camp or whatever? It was well, some village, um, but it wasn't his. I thought what, he was no, aware of what his. it was. What were they there he's for? He's aware of what why. happened to the village because his right. his he clan says, like, or whatever. There, right? Yeah, his, his clan or whatever had burned it to the ground essentially. Okay. So he becomes like her captive and then they kind of go on a journey like he's essentially with her the entire time um, going on this journey as she then finds out that there are what is it giants that nobody can slay and that to keep them at bay they offer sacrifices which are humans to the giants Um, and then from there, you guys can help me out because this is where it kind of gets like a, you know, I remember the ending, but like, I don't remember why she was able to kill these giants, whereas other people couldn't. Do you guys yeah. know why she had that ability? So, Jesse, you probably understand it better than me, but I just want to say, I want to say what I think just to see if I understood this correctly, because <clears throat> I was a bit confused at times. Um, so, what I gathered <clears throat> was that she would. She'd learn their names mm-hmm. and she'd be able to say their name and free them from their whole thing. But like that, that kind of confused me. I, listen, I'm not sitting here thinking like that can't really happen. It's not like that. <laughs> I'm just wondering what exactly. Why that you know? would cause that. Es- essentially, right. it, she's making the uh, giants face what they've done, why, why they became a giant in the first place and reconcile what happened to become human again basically gotcha do they tell the story because i don't remember and maybe you do and maybe you don't like for instance the first giant is behind you yes what what was his story i think i remember him being well, like the, a murderer this, or this is actually something. the second giant behind me it the is? first oh, giant that's the water one right yeah the the first one uh the story is that a mom or woman of some sort had oh the volcanic one uh yeah. yes the one that oh, kind of okay. comes out of the ground at one point when they're okay. first introducing yes, yes. the giants. Okay. Uh, a mom had uh, given her child or infant for a uh, to the giant for a uh, when you uh, sacrifice sacrifice. God damn it! Yes, for a <laughs> sacrifice. Uh, and what that ended up doing was riddled the mom with guilt, guilt, and 
that guilt kept feeding and feeding and feeding, and she became a giant. Okay. As a was result it, of it. Was it? Am I wrong? Or wasn't it? Was it also something to do with? Or is this the second one? That there was like famine and problems all over the area, and she thought that they would protect them or something like that. Am I wrong so about that? So that's the second one. That's the second one. Okay. So the second one is that uh, this dude was a part of this village. And this village was having all of these issues, and a leader came up to try to save them and bring them, help them prosper. And this guy ended up uh, stabbing him in the back, essentially. And then the village found out about it, cast him out of the village, threw him into the ocean. And when he came back from the ocean, he was a giant. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So it's actually, it's pretty, even though, you know, Rudy and I aren't completely remembering him. I do think it was cool that there was like a backstory to each character. And it's almost like she had to learn their story, connect with them in an an emotional way. And there's the reason I'm using that word emotional is that's kind of the theme of these games. Um, They're very emotional. They want you to connect with the characters, connect with their stories. So the literally the main character here is connecting with these giants (laughs) um and setting them free and that's actually how she beats them so that's actually another transition aside from just talking the story what were your guys's thoughts on when you were battling these giants were they good battles or good the way they did it or do you think they should have done it better or what were your overall thoughts and you can go through them one by one if you want, or you can just do an overview of what your thoughts were on those uh, encounters. Go ahead, Rudy. Okay. Um, so I thought that for this game and the kind of game it, it is, um, <clears throat> I thought these encounters made sense, right? I think it would have been silly if you fought the, the giant as, like, you know, a normal enemy all of a sudden. You know, I, I think like it was God cool. of War. <laughs> right. Like, that makes sense for that game, you know? I thought it was cool that you did like a, <clears throat> you're trying to get closer and closer to them and they're raging and, you know, they're pushing you away. And I love, love, love that every time you die, you start right there. Cause that would have really pissed me off. <laughs> if you got like halfway up to the giant and you died at the beginning, God, that would have frustrated me. So I feel like sometimes it's okay to just bend the rules completely just to, you know, I'm not inconvenience the player. Cause that would have, anyway, I, I thought it made a lot of sense. I thought it was cool how they did it. I thought it was really epic when, when you did both of them. Um, so yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was really well done. My question for you guys is, do you think those giants were actual giants or do you think they were, that was actually going to be one of my questions Were uh, metaphorical. I, I think it was all from what I understand, at least I think it was all metaphorical. I think the revelation with the dude at the end, Gobi, Gobi, I forgot his name. The last guy. I know yeah. what you're talking about. Gody. I was very his, his fake name is Gody, but that's not his real name. <clears throat> right. Correct. I was very confused for a minute um, when he said, when they said, like, well, I'm the giant, whatever. But then I started piecing it together, and I think that just meant he just scared everyone so much that he made them believe that they were giants. You know, we didn't yeah, see it that I, way, but that's kind of what I gather from it. Yeah, I think he was a deceiver and a liar, um, and he wanted power. And so he used, like, storms and natural, like, right, right. Uh, <laughs> terrible things to basically said these are giants causing this um so i personally could be wrong do not believe especially again going back to what i think the theme of these games are and that's it's all about head games and emotions i think this is a head game where it's like they all believe it in their mind so therefore it's true in reality it doesn't exist they've just all been manipulated by this one guy I yep. agree. That, that's kind of what I got from it too. I don't think they're which, real. Which, yeah. I, when that happened, I was like, I was, I don't know, it might not even be reasonable, but I was like a bit disappointed. I'm like, oh man, they weren't even real. But then I was like, okay, well, I still experienced it. I still thought it was, I still saw the whole spectacle and everything. So whatever. I guess I don't really care either way. But I mean, yeah. technically, if, if you want to look at it in a different perspective, it is real. What they're experiencing, they are sure, really sure. experiencing that. That, yeah, you're right. Which it actually, happen. it actually makes sense though. Like, if they're not real, so keep in mind, I'm assuming that they're not real. Right. It's all in your head. The way that you fight them is you're not actually fighting them. You're just 
going through a storm, essentially. Like the one that on the ocean, on the beach, you're fighting what? Waves and wind. The one in the volcanic area, you're fighting the heat or whatever, you know, that area. So it's all environmental, which would support it not being real, that it's what she's actually going through is just Mother Nature. But they don't know that. She does, or she's probably aware of it. Well, no, she's I don't having think these conversations is. with them. No, she thinks they're real. Uh, <laughs> she's a nutcase. She thinks they're real. Um, but anyways, if they don't really exist, she's actually just going through storms and something environmental. Then in her mind, she's actually fighting a giant. And then in the minds of everybody else, because they believe this lie, she's fighting a giant. Uh, going back to my question, though, Jesse, what were your thoughts of those battles or you know that those encounters with the with the giants did you like it did you think it fit the game would you have done something different no i think it fit well uh because what those little experiences did well you like followed the little ghost people or whatever through this basically what the story of that giant is it gives you a lot of context to why what's happening to that region is happening gives you mm-hmm. context into what happened to these people and it really just leads credence to the fact that the giants aren't real she's just working her way through finding out what is important to these people and what happened to them so that then she can try to fix what happened essentially yeah i think i think it it fits the game not that i would have changed it if they were actually really real but I think it fits with what the overall theme of the game is. And like I said, it's in your head type deal. Um, and it's more of a cinematic encounter than it is um, an actual boss fight or whatever. If you had and actually fought the giants, it would have made them real, I think. Which that's wouldn't necessarily where, where be I was bad. Going with right, yeah, right. but I, that's where I was going. Is that because she didn't actually fight them. It kind of, like I said, it more plays into this is all in your head, which let's jump to unless you guys have anything else you want to talk. Well, let me ask this before I jump to the ending. Sure. There's I and I'm if I'm missing anybody, let me know. There's like three main companions. There's Thorg. Then there's Farg. Fargmir Fargmir or something. Fargmir. Yeah. And then the chick that I said before, (laughs) Astrid or whatever, Astrid. Um, what? Who was your favorite uh, companion? And again, when I say companion, like they weren't really like hanging out with you the whole time, but you know what I mean. Uh, right. Character that you met in the game, their backstory, who they were. Who was your favorite, if you can think of it? For me, it's definitely Thor. Uh, I feel like he's the only one that has a real arc between right. between the companions. Like you said, the. The girl didn't, she wasn't in the game long enough to have any kind of character development. I mean, she was fine. She seemed like a good character, but yeah. she just kind of was who she was. With Fargamir, or whatever his name is, Yeah. Uh, he has some development, but he doesn't really go through any kind of arc. Who no. he is at the, when you meet him is basically who he is at the end, which, again, isn't necessarily bad. Not everybody has to have some big revelation. But I feel like the first character, Thor, uh, his arc and the way that he and Senua kind of their relationship grow really made the game better for what his character was going through. I would agree. Like as far as voice acting and listening to him talk, I would go with Figamir or whatever his name is. I like that that guy, the voice actor, too. Um, But as far as arc and the fact is that as you get to the end of the game and you've, you know, there's kind of a, a reveal and, you know, something terrible that happens. Um, I would say Thor was for me, my favorite character again, strictly because of arc, not because I'm like, Oh, I really like this guy. Cause he was kind of a, a jerk in the beginning. Then he kind of starts to come around a little bit. And then by the end he becomes he becomes a huge supporter. Like he's right. he's essentially talking to his dad and going, dude, this this girl can really ki- kill the the giants and so on. So 
Rudy, again, before we get to the ending, we're going to go to that next. Who, sure. Was there a character that stuck out for you aside from Senua? Yeah, I was going to say, for me, <clears throat> there's no argument. It's definitely uh, old Thorster there. Um, <laughs> I feel like the game in the beginning, it really made you kind of hate him and despise him. Even if I tried to look at <clears throat> his side of things, Okay, I had like a bit of empathy. I'm like, okay, he's in a tough position. It, that's probably all they know, whatever. But I, I definitely didn't like him at first. And again, he's like one of the first few, few people you fight, you know? So as we went on and she showed him the truth about the Giants and <clears throat> you saw him start to kind of accept that, you know, what he believed was not, not really the truth. And even when he went to his dad and you could tell he was scared. He wasn't really pushing back on his dad at first he thought in his head that his he could convince his dad and Sanua knew that wasn't mm. uh gonna happen but then he made like the ultimate sacrifice at the end you know and it was yeah it was an emotional scene you know his dad threw him aside like he doesn't care about him never cared about him but i thought him and Sanua at that point kind of solidified what they had and then unfortunately had to die but yeah no i thought his arc was was the reason why it made him way better than the others you know so absolutely all right well speaking of his death let's jump to the ending um, so at the end, we uh, we essentially get to I'm going to go to his name real quick. It's Gord, like you said. I think it's Gord. Oh, really no, like sorry. Goaty something, right? So yeah, it's, it's Goaty. Yeah. So you uh, make your way to Goaty's camp. Um, and that is Thorg's father. And you're there to basically because he's the one that collects the, the slaves. He sends out his son and, and groups to go and grab people to sacrifice them to these giants to keep them at bay. Because if he doesn't sacrifice them, then the giants will turn on him and destroy the entire land. So he's got everybody living in fear, but that's where the twist kind of comes in. So Jesse jump in and, and fill us in what, what your thoughts were with that big, well, I'll call it big reveal at the end of who Goaty is and and what what was really going on. Uh, so the, I'll just say that the whole ending I felt was slightly rushed uh, at the end yes. there. But I thought that the way they finished the story was great, to be honest, uh, mm -hmm. with Goaty having made a essentially made a pact with the gods. And that's what he's told people to be able to keep these giants at bay when really it was just him the whole time fear mongering and making sure that everybody respected him because they feared him essentially and feared everything that he was protecting them from yeah. and everything that was good. And I loved how once Senua got him down and defeated him she goes through this whole realization that she could be just like him. Exactly. If she goes down the same path as her father had basically modeled for her, she has this moment where she needs to decide if she's going to be kind and compassionate like her mother or violent and fear-mongering like her father. It's, I think it's done great. Uh, I vote violent and fear mongering, but that's just, <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> when she had the rock above him, I'm like, do it, slam it on his head. <laughs> yes. So, Rudy, what what were your thoughts? Are you in line with Jesse, or did you see things differently? How did you feel about the reveal? Did you feel any part of this was rushed or anything like that? Yeah, I I I did feel. Again, I didn't have a problem with the pacing really, but I did feel like they definitely could have added a bit more in that stretch there. I felt like some of the earlier areas, like the one we were discussing before, was maybe a little bit long, and this was a bit short. So I think they totally could have, I don't know, it could have been more than just you go up, he tries to talk to his dad, dad says no, and then what, you know, shortly thereafter you're done. I think it could have stretched out. Maybe it could have even been a thing where they escape and and uh, Thor is is wounded and, and Sanua helps them and they come back. You know, something like that. Whatever. That's yeah. just spitballing an idea, but I feel like they totally could have <clears throat> added something else in there. I, I think it's interesting uh, implications for if there's going to be a third one to see, well, what's the what's the objective going to be this time? Is it going to be Sanua leading a group? Um, is she... I think it would be really interesting, as much as we all like her character, if maybe... 
they played a little bit with like you know a little bit of that gray area like the, think like mass effect you know like being maybe a bit bad or something maybe she does some messed up things and then she comes back i don't know maybe she has a similar arc to thor you know who knows but i really hope we get another one if that's where they're leaving it you know so yeah so that that was that was kind of my my feelings on the game too um i do feel like i say it's more rushed not because i felt like the ending was abrupt could they have done something more than just a quick conversation with the with the dad and then him betray the son and stab him what did he stab him from behind so he didn't even get to see it um, <laughs> yeah true uh which is very cold like absolutely cold. Well, that's your son so well, Derek, Derek, I'm sorry, just to jump in before we move on. I, I feel that there were other things that were drawn out and they were fine, mm -hmm. like the whole hidden folk and learning who they are and them give us all this all to lead to the giant thing, right? So why couldn't we get a little more exposition or something with this? You know, that's kind of how I feel about it. So. That's that's what I, I was thinking is like go there and maybe not figure <laughs> out who he is right away. Maybe right. he send you on an assignment and then as you're on that assignment uh you know you discover who he truly is and what he's really truly been doing because and correct me if i'm wrong because i could be wrong i don't remember things all that well i play games i'm like beat on them i have <laughs> I like my <laughs> i have my feelings towards them and then i just i'm like it's almost like i never played the game <laughs> um so i'm actually impressed that i'm remembering as much as i am Granted, I did a little bit of research too, but if they, if they, uh, did they like really even hint at that his father was behind any of this? Like, did she um, know going there or was she completely blindsided by it? And then, you know, obviously figured it out when they're fighting, you know, yeah. that type of thing. I don't think she was blind. She didn't know about it when she got on that boat to be, uh, yes sacrifice and all that but by the time that she got to that camp yeah she absolutely knew the father was behind everything okay, okay. when was that revealed do you remember i think a lot of it came out so there's a scene where uh the when the girl first comes in and they ba she takes uh the son basically by the throat and is ready to kill him and oh, yeah. Senua and Fargamir convince her not to, essentially, because she can kill the giants and all of that. Right. Yeah. I think it comes out at that point that really who the enemy is is the dad, because that's who, that's who uh, the girl thinks it is. Okay. That's right. Oh, that's right. Okay. She was always, she was always, uh, she didn't trust what was right. going she on. She didn't trust them at all. Right. That's right. And I forgot about that. So she, she might... In that moment, she didn't know that he was just scaring them and making it all, but she knew that he was the one to go after, I guess, right? Right, yeah. I don't think that she knew that she, he was, like, behind the giants and doing all right. of that, but right. she knew that he was the ultimate threat. He was the, And she knew he wouldn't listen to reason, but the son obviously right. thought he might. Okay. So she probably still believed in the giants, but knew that he was still pure evil for what he was doing and that he needed to die. I so. Think I think by the end, she still thinks she defeated giants. Yeah. 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 Well, she's female and crazy. So <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> but, I, but my impressions are, I, I thought, I, like I said, based off, I'm going based off feelings. I felt as I was watching the reveal and, I, and it was being explained or you were piecing it together right then and there. Oh, he's not. He's been misleading them. And I, again, never thought about that the entire time I'm playing this. I never thought, oh, Thorg's dad, who he's like, we need to get to him. We need to get to him, right? Um, I never thought, oh, he's he's going to betray his son. I never thought he yeah, had this coming. dubious yeah, plan. But it fits with like the setting that they're in. This is what, you know, all the, a lot of horse historic data is. This is like families betraying families. Uh, <laughs> You, you know, back then they were ruthless. Like we just, yeah. you just killed somebody if somebody was of value anymore, even if they are family. Um, so it was extremely ruthless. And then I enjoyed the, I already said, I enjoyed the, what I call like your little Marvel cinematic fight that was so to cool. get, get to him. And then when you actually fight him, I enjoyed the fight and I liked how it played out, how the, how it was switching between almost like the underworld and then real world. 
and you actually see the people shoving them around and things like that. Um, and then it obviously ends where you get the reveal. So I enjoy the conclusion of the game. Um, I understood it more than I probably understood the first one. Same with um, and I think that's what made me maybe enjoy it a little bit more is I was like, this story makes more sense. It wasn't Funny. as crazy. I feel completely different about that. I feel That's like this the, one has a lot it. more gray to it than the first one did. I, I the don't first know one, why basically, it's all psychosis. Like... like, almost nothing that happens in the first game is happening sure. the way she's perceiving it happening. Where right. in the second one, I feel like sometimes it's hard to tell what's real and what's not real. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, it's so, well, that's it's so good. funny that we that we both had such similar experiences and thoughts on this because yeah I felt that way too and I knew I knew going into it when I finished the game that that definitely was not the consensus you know a lot of people don't like the story as much in the second one a lot of people also um, don't feel that it's it's what we're saying you know but I, I gotta say now in retrospect looking at some of the reviews and stuff some of the things they were saying I'm like <clears throat> like one person said, well, you just hold the stick forward for the first hour of the game. Like, that's not true, not, actually. That's not true at all. That's totally it's not true. so like, dramatic. And, and I, I heard <laughs> that, too. I don't know if we watched the same review or whatever, yeah. read the same thing. But I went and played the game, and I'm like, no, that's that's not accurate yeah, at I all. Yeah, I like, freaking Dreamcast guy. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, it might have been him. I can't remember who it was, but but whatever. That's just what the point I'm trying to make is that's just one of, like, a lot of little things I heard that I just don't listen. It's a review, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but just a lot of things that I didn't see to be a problem, really. Like people saying, Well, it's just not, it just gets boring. I never felt bored at one point uh, throughout this game. Uh, I even saw someone say something about the puzzles are too frequent. I was like, I didn't feel that way at all this time around. I, I, I don't know. For what it's uh, well, for what it's know, worth, you just hold the stick forward a lot more in the first game than you do in the second. Yeah, I was gonna say that I totally disagree with what this. I feel like it's backwards, and I the feel people like who don't like this one or love the first one. It seems that everyone says that people's expectations. It's almost like I had a reverse experience of everybody else, which makes <laughs> sense because that's my personality. But like <laughs> the first one, it was almost like people were like, "Oh my god." This is a game about <laughs> mental health. It's so freaking good. It's on PlayStation, not on Xbox. So it's really, really good. <laughs> and then the second one comes out and it's almost like everybody's like, dude, why is this not like God of War? Why why is this like the first one? This is not good. And I'm like, w what? But then you go to Metacritic. So this is just, again, what I'm hearing. I saw it on in the groups that I follow, all this stuff. I'm like... Man, this game sounds like it's terrible. And then I go to Metacritic, and I'm like, the first one, second one, they're almost <laughs> identical score wise. They're they were literally the exact same. I don't know if it's changed, but at one point, it was, I think they were both like 81 or 82 or something both like 81. that. And I was like, yeah, and I'm like, 81. Wow. You would think the second one's like a 70, and the first one was like a 90. But it's not. They're both the the same, or around about the same. Maybe a point difference now. Um, yet the the like I said, the the loudness of the people complaining about what the game was, how long it was, all that stuff. I think overshadowed what I think the majority of even reviewers thought. And then the reviewers that scored it high, I saw people kind of just like, well, they're Xbox. And I right, was like, well, <laughs> where was the logic when the ponies were giving the first one high scores? So it, it, it was all just stupid crap that I I'll be honest with you. I know I'm talking about it now, but I don't really get involved with it anymore. Um, I play on my PC 99 percent of the time, so I don't even give a crap about console gaming yeah. unless it's an exclusive. So when people are bickering back and forth, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> And okay, as I yo. said earlier, majority of the time, I'm a positive gamer. So while people are looking for reasons to complain, I'm looking for reasons to like the game. So my overall experience was really, really good with this game. And I thought, you know, it, they did a good job. And they yeah. they nailed a cinematic, emotional movie, in my opinion. Does anybody have any last thoughts on anything before we close? Sure. I just want to say that I I feel that Thank from you. the froze. Oh, are we good now? 
Oh, I. I hear you. I can still hear You're everybody. Not moving though. I, oh. I don't know if it's my. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, I can see him Maybe moving. it's a Skype thing. It's weird. Let me let me turn off my camera and turn it back on. Hold on. Let's just see. Turn it off. There you go. Okay. Are we good now? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. What I was gonna say was, I feel again. It's been a long time since I played the first one, so I need to refresh my memory. But I feel that the only thing that someone could push back on me on saying that the first one is better than the second one, maybe the story, if you like the story in the first one more than the second one, okay, I can respect that. But, and I guess you can have opinion on the combat, right? Do you like the more complex combat, which to me doesn't fit the game really, or do you want the more simplified combat? But with the exception of those two things, I can't see how anyone could possibly say the first one's awesome and the second one sucks. I can't wrap my head around that. The graphics look better. They got even better with the sound design and the, the psychosis and everything. In my opinion, I think they did it even better. It was already great in the first one. I think they did it even better in this one. The set pieces were way better done in the first one. The puzzles are better in the first one. There's more variety. I mean, how can you say that? that <laughs> I, I guess I don't understand that. I was shocked when the reviewers were giving it such bad reviews in some cases when they love the first one, you know? I yeah. think that's where that, I was confused. I think that by just about every metric, the second game is better. Sure. I think that for me, I still like I, I still say I like the first game more, but I think a lot of that is because the first game had more impact. It was sure. new. It was a completely it was new. new experience. Right. Yeah. I had never experienced a game like that before. So Hellblade 2 was never going to be able to replicate that feeling I had when I played sure. that first game. But by basically every metric, the second game is better. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is similar to how I feel with, um, with the last two Zelda games. Because I think that the, next one, the second one is technically better than the first one. But I didn't even finish the second one yet. I, I just didn't have like the first Ooh, one. I was like, oh my god, this is crazy. For me. I know, it's totally crazy. Yeah, me. Nothing. It's just like I gotta go. Back. I can't. I can't have you on my show anymore. I can't <laughs> even. I, I. I can't even believe myself. Honestly, that I even said that out loud. I don't but even know. That is surprising. That's my show. I know. Surprising. I know. Why are you I know. on my show, Jesse? <laughs> let me just. Let me just leave right now. I, I'm done. I don't have any respect anymore. <laughs> no, but seriously, the first one grabbed me so hard. I absolutely loved that. I couldn't stop playing. I was like, "This is Zelda. Holy crap! This is amazing." The second one, I started off the same exact way, and I don't really have anything negative to say about it. They added a lot of new cool stuff, but. For whatever reason, maybe it's because the second time around it didn't hit hard like that for me. Kind of similar to what Jesse's describing, um, but yeah, I still got to finish that. But yeah, how far did you just out of curiosity? Oh my god, I got, I got like fifty hours in. But you know how big that game is, you know. I did a few temples, but I did so much side stuff. I, I messed around I was, so much with like. I didn't even do everything. I think I I beat it pretty quickly, and it still took me over eighty hours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that That's what I got in do. my opinion, as a Breath of the Wild lover, right. Tears of the Kingdom destroys Breath of the Wild, and See, I and the absolutely crazy love Breath of the Wild. See, as that's a Breath of the Wild hater, I can tell yes. you that the second one is better. <laughs> the second one is immeasurably <laughs> better. Yeah, they're both See, it's, good. It's so, listen, I know we're here for Hellboy, but last thing, real quick, with Breath of the Wild, I think. <clears throat> It was so fresh. It was so new. The open world stuff was amazing. But I do think that the mechanics they added in the second one really, really elevated. But I think it's just the fact that it's we've been here before. You know, I think that's what messed me up. And I was shocked at myself. I'm like, why am I not? Be- I'm the biggest Zelda fan there is. What is going on with me? And, and yeah. it was really weird. So, Well, I'll get, tell you what, Rudy. Uh, I really enjoyed having you on. And Thanks, if you do jump back in the tears of the kingdom and you just decide to finish it which you should you are welcome to come back on the show i okay. will talk about that game all day every day because okay, cool. i'm a huge Zelda van and especially the last two have been gold absolute gold but awesome, this this show that. was real good i enjoyed breaking the game down overall all three of us of course liked the game we think it's worth playing if you're listening i hope you like the game i thought the story had enough depth yes i think the story had enough uh there to to warrant a uh spoiler cast so i appreciate you guys listening and i hope you guys have a great week signing off see ya